Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? I met today's guest in a yoga retreat last year, and I've been so inspired and fascinated by her journey ever since. Her name is Jen Redden. She's a respiratory therapist turned breath coach and the founder of Orange Sky Wellness. She helps women harness the power of breath to start living a more connected life. Jen spent 16 years as a respiratory therapist helping sick people breathe. After experiencing a crisis in her own life, she realized her true calling was to help other humans harness the power of their greatest resource, the breath to heal emotionally, find real peace, and live a more fulfilling life. Through breath coaching, she helps her clients create a deeper connection with themselves so they can live a more beautiful and fulfilling life. In today's episode, Jen shares how a retreat removed the noise and helped her listen to herself, how she went from being in acute healthcare to a more holistic setting and approach, the healing and grounding powers of the breath, the inner work that she's taken and continues to nurture, the importance of making space for integration to digest and heal from your breakthroughs, her three-prong approach to coaching, breath, self-care, and neuroscience, how she fills her cup every day with meditation, breath work, and journaling, how she turns misadventures into opportunities, and she shares some amazing breathing tips with us. Let's dive in been up too lately maybe we can start there oh okay um wow so this year has been a huge shift for me um so you and I met in Utah yeah was it like a year ago almost a year ago well no more than a year ago yeah a little bit over a year ago and that was probably one of the most formidable parts of my transition into where I'm at right now. That was the first time I'd ever been on a retreat. And it was the first time that I really listened to myself, right? There were, for those 10 days, I had no external need to do what someone else needed me to do. It was all about me and what felt good to me. And so that was the first time in my life that I actually listened to myself and could hear myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And not even myself as in this physical being, but, you know, my guides, my future self, everybody just all of a sudden was there with me. And shortly after we got back from that retreat, I turned in my resignation at my job. It was probably about a month maybe a month and a half after we got back, I, I turned in my resignation. And I work, I am a registered respiratory therapist. I still have my license. I can go work anywhere um, in the state of Virginia with that license. I still have all of my credentials. I still have my, my degree that I worked really, really hard for. And I don't want to, you know, discount or not use it because the breath is very important to me. But I chose that there's got to be another way that we I can help people besides in the acute care setting and the hospital setting. And so I left and I was in middle, I was in middle management. So I wasn't taking care of the patients anymore. I was managing a department of 50 people in a job that is 24, seven, 365 days a year. So I would get phone calls at nine o'clock at night. I'd get phone calls at four o'clock in the morning. I, you know, I never really had time away. So it was just time, and I realized that when I was in Utah, I was like, oh, it's time for me to move on to something else. 
And I wanted to, I always wanted to do something on the holistic side of helping people connect, helping people heal um, and find their inner truth. So I left that and stepped into, I had, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even really know what I wanted to do. I gave people an answer because people want an answer. And I said, oh yeah, I'm gonna do workplace wellness. And I was like, that's not really what I'm gonna do. I really have no idea what I'm doing. And then the pandemic hit and just like you, it was like, okay, I guess it's really all about me now. I have nowhere to hide. I have, I can't go anywhere. I don't have a, um, a job that's forcing me to do or be anywhere. So I guess, I guess it's just me. <laughs> so I uh, kept diving into that and using the breath as my guide there, signing up for, you know, holistic breath and breathwork courses and signing up with people to learn more about the breath and step into my breath. And the more I kept doing it, I was like, this is innately in me, right? First of all, the breath is innately in all of us, but I've been working with the breath in a very um, scientific healing way already. I know so much about it. Now maybe I can help people before they get to the hospital. Maybe I can help people use the breath in a way that helps them heal their anxiety, heal their pain and suffering. And so that's how I ended up doing what I do and becoming a breath coach. Because for me, it's all about finding that holistic way that you can heal yourself from the inside out. Because the moment that you find that connection, then all of a sudden, everything around you just falls into place. And there's less stress, there's less worry. You know that you can surrender into the, the difficultness of life sometimes. So, yeah, that's what I do now. I'm a breath coach. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you for taking us through the journey. And I imagine it wasn't as smooth at the beginning when you, like, you know, when you transition and go through the shift. You mentioned in Utah that that was like something shifted. Was there anything in particular or it was like a culmination of everything? I think it was just everything. I, I think for the first time I could hear my, I think I, I've always, I'm very um, intuitive. I always have been. I've always had a special connection. I think we all do as children, right? I don't think it's just at some point, you either step back into that intuition and you step back into that being able to hear um, beyond this world where you, it's just not something that you, you want to do. And that's okay. There's no right or wrong how you show up in your life. But for me, it was so ingrained in me from a childhood, it was very easy for me to come right back to it. I shouldn't say easy when I was ready to come back, it became easy. Does that make more, like, I feel like that's, because it's not easy. It's going through the transitions, going through the shifts who make it sound like, oh yeah, like look at where I'm at now. And you're like, you have no, many, no idea how many days I spent crying, how many days like, you're journaling and, and tears just start falling or meditations and tears are falling, whether they're happy or um, sad. It's just, it's this constant ebb and flow of inviting and receiving, inviting and receiving and releasing and receiving and meeting yourself where you are. And the more you give yourself those opportunities to do that, that's where the work becomes easier. If you're constantly resisting and you're constantly pushing, we make it more difficult on ourselves. I love that. I love what you said. I, I feel so inspired by it. And it's so true. What were some ways that help you find clarity in that process? Because I think a lot of us, we get afraid, you know, we, when we hear ourselves and we notice that what our inner voice is saying is like, where you are right now is not the place you should be. It can be so daunting. What were some tools that you use to kind of, you know, stay 
keep sailing, even though you know the storms were going to be rough. Um, my breath, my breath is a hundred, anytime I'm able to just breathe for three minutes, the moment I start to feel anxious or scared or, oh my gosh, I'm just not good enough, right, to be doing this, I might as well just go back to what I was doing before. It'd be, it, in my breath. I, I could always find the answer in my breath. I could always hear the voice in my breath. And I'm like, that's not true, Jennifer. Um, and then, so the breath is number one, meditation, which you can use the two together. And I, I generally do. I have a breath practice that I do before I meditate. And then I, I take a few deep breaths after I meditate. Um, in the morning, it's the first thing I do is connect with my breath, which is also you can create a meditation practice out of that. I like to use both. Um, I use my breath as the guide into my higher level of consciousness. So then when I get into my meditation, I'm at a deeper, higher state, and I'm able to receive messages and hear um, things a little bit more clearly. And then afterwards, I feel like the synchronicity is just all like, oh, wow, there it is, there it is, right? So, yeah. Um, my breath, meditation, journaling has been huge. I'm actually, I'm on my sixth journal this year. Really? Yes. That's how much I've been journaling this year. Six journals, um, all different shapes and sizes, of course. Um, but I look back and I'm like, holy crap, I've written a lot. Um, so, so many different breakthroughs, so many different um, shifts in mentality happening within those journals. And then, um, it's kind of documenting your process, you know, all the, the shedding, <laughs> the unwiring as well. Yeah. You know, I love how you, you know, you brought the importance of breath and this is something you specialize on. Tell me a little bit about it. How did you discover the power of breath? Um, so I first found my first holistic breath practice with um back in 2013 it was just shortly after a very very difficult year 2012 was a very very difficult year in my life um and so i found this practice right after that and it really just shifted me and then after working with the breath i mean 16 years in the acute care setting i've 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 seen every age. I've seen the beginning stages of someone being born um, and taking their first breath. And I have been at the bedside um, being there when someone takes their last breath. I have seen every stage of breath. I've helped um, many people come off a ventilator. I've helped many people um, survive an asthma exacerbation. And I wanted it just to be more holistic. I, I want, I, you know, there is a time and a place for Western medicine. I believe that wholeheartedly. I believe there, you know, all of the advances that we have in Western medicine, there is a time and a place for it. I believe that so much of the Western things that we experience are self-inflicted. And if we could get to a point where we can honor ourselves, right? Listen, tune in to ourselves and prevent that from happening. Um, or at least curb that initial blow of all of that suffering. And I think the breath is the gateway to that. I honestly believe that in the breath, we can release old wounds. We can... Um, Find a sense of ease, find that stillness, find that softness in how we move throughout our entire day. And I'm not saying let's, you know, we can breathe for three minutes, you and I, and all of a sudden you know, your life is going to transform. It is what you do after that. You know, it is you do the work, you breathe together. That is the work. And then you have to integrate that work into your everyday life. And that may be through meditation, journaling, spending more time with your breath. And the more you take that time to spend with your breath, 
on the days where you don't feel anxious and you don't feel tired and you don't feel stressed, the more you start to recognize when those things are arising within you and you can witness that from an observer point of view and think, okay, well, I'm feeling this, I'm witnessing this. That means I probably need to go inward for a little bit and maybe let's figure out where that's coming from. And it is all about that inner journey that we have to go through. I think all holistic healing, no matter what practice that you take or what practice you feel is the most aligned with you, it's all about the inner journey and finding that thing that allows you the space to feel into what it is that you need and what it is that you need to heal from the past. Because everything that you have done and experienced in your life is in you. Everything. It's still there. Uh, we choose what we hold on to and we choose what we are ready to release. Did that answer your question? I feel like that was a really long. <laughs> there is no long. There is, you know, it, it, everything is like neatly wrapped as it should be, I feel like, because <laughs> it's such a, you touch on so many important points, you know, mm -hmm. the breath is something that's always there and how our body holds on to things and also how sometimes, you know, the practices is something that matters the most even after, not during the practice. And I think a lot of people take it for granted. Like I've meditated 15 minutes today and I should be able to take on the world and not let anything stress me. But that's not how it works. Like the practices matter the most when part of my friend when shit hits the fan, you know? <laughs> that's when it matters the most. That's, that's when you're being challenged. Can you stay calm? Can you stay, you know, within yourself and still listen to whatever these stimulants are trying to tell you or screaming at you. Right. And I think we get, I think what is in the practice that then it's that communication piece. So let's just talk about meditation and journal. That is a communication piece between you and the universe. However you want to see the universe, whatever that means to you. So it's that communication piece. And if you present the universe that you want to release or heal something, that's what's going to show up the rest of your day, week, slash month, until you go, oh, I see. I see what I see what you did there, right? So until you go, okay, I'm I'm really struggling with feeling supported. I'm really struggling with feeling um, loved. I'm really struggling with stress. I'm really struggling with this person. When you have that communication during your meditation and then afterwards you get up and walk away, guess what's the first thing that's gonna happen? You're gonna be presented with an opportunity to shift whatever, however you're thinking and however you're seeing that um, situation coming to you. And that is how the universe speaks to us. It doesn't speak to you like, oh, well, this is what you want. Well, here's a million dollars. That's not how the universe works. Mm -hmm. It works on that level of you, oh, well, this is what you want to work on. This is what you want to heal. I'm going to give you those opportunities. And the moment you accept those opportunities mm -hmm. as a learning process, then the universe goes, oh, you really are ready to release this. You really are ready to heal this. Okay, well, then I'm going to. I'm going to give you that space and I'm going to give you that time and I'm going to give you the opportunity to continue to do that. So the practice itself is important because without it, we wouldn't know what it is that we need. Mm -hmm. But beyond the practice, it is in that is where we actually get what we need. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, this also reminded me of what you share in the Strala Yoga Retreat when you talked about buffet, wanting all the buffet in the menus. Do you want to share that again? I think people will love it because it stuck with me. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> I, have, I haven't actually thought about it in a while. So um, yeah, I'll share it. So the idea is that you sit down to dinner and you're at this really five-star fancy, fancy restaurant and they have whatever you want. There is no menu because you can have whatever you want. 
So you, the waiter comes up and asks, what do you want? And you say, I want spaghetti. That sounds delightful. And you order the spaghetti exactly want, as you want it. Maybe you want it vegan. Maybe you want it with beef. However you want it, you get to choose however that spaghetti is going to be. So the waiter writes it down, takes it back, comes to the kitchen. And the whole time, the kitchen is back there making the spaghetti for you. And then you're sitting at that table, and you're like, wait a second. I don't want spaghetti. I want steak. Next time the waiter comes out, what does he, you say, I want steak. So the waiter goes back, tells the, tells the kitchen, they don't, want this, they don't want the spaghetti anymore. So they toss the spaghetti out, and then they start making the steak. That is the idea of the universe. The universe is the kitchen. It's constantly going to give you what you want. If you don't have it in you, and you're not listening to what it is that you really, really want, and you keep changing your mind, the universe is, it's going to be hard for it to give you what you want, right? It's that same analogy. You're going to feel like, I've never get what I've asked for. People talk about manifesting all the time. They're like, I never get what I asked for. And it's, are you, are you sticking with it? Are you really aligned in what you're asking for? Maybe you were never aligned with spaghetti in the first place. You were always aligned with the spaghetti. Yes, that's so important. Are you aligned with what you're asking for? Yes. So, so crucial. It is. It is a hundred. I think that is the thing where we get lost. We think that we have to live our life based around what everyone else wants. And we think we have to live our life authentically in what we see other people living. Mm -hmm. And we miss the point of, am I aligned? Am I doing what feels good to me? Is this really an aligned action with who I am and my truth? And until we get to, each one of us gets to that point, We're gonna we're gonna find struggles, right? We're gonna feel like we're not manifesting the things that we want. We're gonna feel like no one supports us. We're gonna feel alone and isolated because we haven't found our truth yet. Yes, so many moments that I'm just absorbing what you're saying because it it there's so much truth in it as well. And I guess I would like to put that alignment question into practice when you went from um, the acute healthcare to a more holistic approach. How was that transition? You know, having all that structure and, and then going to a more holistic, how was the, was it like a 180, 360? <laughs> a complete 180. I, I had a ton of I had a ton of structure, right? You had to be at work at a certain time. There were certain things, certain tasks that you had to do, certain things that I needed to get done, responsibilities. And now I'm my own boss. So I get to make those rules up. And I'm still figuring that out <laughs> in the middle of all of this. I haven't quite figured out what that looks like, what that, you know, when it changes. Um, I remember, I have two things that I, I feel like I, I want to share. The first one is I remember I've always wanted to have the week between Christmas and New Year's off, you know, that whole time. Like I've never worked in a job, 16 years in healthcare, I've never just had vacation time and holidays. And before I was in healthcare, I worked retail. I didn't know what it meant to have, so I, that is a dream of mine, just to have, I don't work. I get to spend time with family. I get to go and do things. I get to sit and watch Hallmark movies, Christmas movies if I want to, right? Like sit in my warm, comfy clothes when it's winter outside and I just get to enjoy. And I'm looking forward to that this year. I get to make that choice that I don't have to work. But the crazy thing, Jess, that I realize now is I actually love what I do so much. I'm not that upset about it, right? Like, I'm like, like, I 
actually, if I had to do work and I get to define what's work, I get to define it. Like it's my decision. If I feel like writing a blog post or sending an email out to my, my community is work, then that's exactly mentally what it's going to be. But if I'm just sharing my story and sharing my, and I'm serving, then it doesn't feel like work. So that is, it's just, it's one of those crazy things that I'm like, well, honestly, if I, if I did do some work during those two weeks, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. I'd feel it would be okay. All those years that I wanted that time off and now I have it and I'm like, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. It's almost like you wanted time off from the jobs you had then so that you can focus on yourself. And now that you've, you know, taking care of yourself, you're completely connected and doing what you love. It really doesn't feel like work. <laughs> it like work at all. Not at all. So I really, yeah. And I, I don't spend hours at work anymore. Um, I have built in my morning ritual to where it literally is how I fill my cup. It's how I serve. Um, my morning journaling, my meditation, my exercise, all of that, I now have that time and that space. So I'm able to, to do more with less. So I, I don't spend out, I, I don't spend hours working. And when I'm with a client, it's my energy, you know, being shared and me holding space for them and the work that they're doing. So I don't, it's, it's just a whole different perspective. It's just, it's so, it's so amazingly wonderful. It's just, and I even love the rough days. I do. I, you know, I have a different perspective on those. So it doesn't feel like even when I had a day where you know, like last week, I spent two hours writing a blog post and my computer just decided it was done. Like, I know. And I lost the whole thing. And yeah, I was mad. Don't, don't, I'm not going to lie. I was mad. I was really mad, but I also have the, the insight now to be like, okay, why is this happening for me? First question. Second how do I get out of this funk and me sitting behind the computer trying to rewrite what I'd already written is not going to help that. So it's time to get out and go for a walk. So I, and then it's just like, well, you know, I had something and maybe that wasn't the time. Maybe that's not what my community needed to hear about at that time. Maybe I have no idea, but um, there are struggles, but my life is so, designed now that I'm able to overcome those and, and, and feel aligned in all that I do, even on the days that are, you know, a bit more challenging. So, yeah, I think there's one other thing I wanted to share. So the, the last year that I was in my job at the hospital, I would wake up every morning and I would tell myself, I'd ask myself, if I had today off, what would I do? What would my day look like? And I would, you know, have this idea of what it looked like. I'd go to work and I did it pretty much every day. Every day I'd wake up. What would I do today if I had today off? And the beautiful thing is I actually have that now. That idea of what my day would look like if I had the day off is what I've created. Oh, that's so beautiful. <laughs> I, it's been so inspiring watching your journey and seeing you, you know, share even the tough days and, you know, because we're human. We're not, doesn't mean we're not going to be feeling any of those uncomfortable emotions, but knowing that it is possible to get there. It is possible to create the life we want and you're, you know, living proof, you know, you're working with the breath, which was what you were doing before, but in a completely different environment that works for you. How, so you talk about holistic breath work. 
How is that different from before? What is holistic breath work? So before, I'll talk just to give that perspective of the, so bef- in, in the hospital setting, breath, we don't really do breath work, right? People come in because they can't breathe. And that might be an asthma exacerbation, that might be the flu, um, maybe it's post-op, maybe they have pneumonia, maybe they're, they're heading in towards um, sepsis. There's, there's a million reasons why someone cannot breathe. And as a respiratory therapist, we step in. Right, whether it's breathing treatments, um, some sort of device, ventilator, BiPAP, something like that to help them breathe, um, or some other modality of therapy. And it's we're treating the illness, not treating the person, right? That is quite literally probably what I would describe Western medicine, right? We're treating the illness in the in this moment. We're not treating anything that's happening beyond this moment and helping them actually heal from the inside out. We're trying to save a life. Um, Holistic breath work is let's find that softness and let's connect with the breath within you. So what it looks like when we work together is we, I get you into a nice relaxed, deep state of relaxation. Then I guide you through different breath practices, which is a modification of the breath. I never like to say that we're going to control or force the breath in any way. It is a modification of the breath. We're going to invite the breath in different areas of the body. Maybe it's in the subdominal region, abdominal region, diaphragm, heart, head, anywhere along the way we can bite the breath in. And we do that for a short amount of time and then we just let the breath be what the breath is and let this intelligence of the breath go where it needs to go. And that is, that is part of that healing process. We do the work, we integrate the work. We do the work, we integrate the work. And that is the integration within the practice itself. And we do that, we go through that a couple of times. And then we go back through relaxation, and then there's deep meditation that lasts anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes, depending on our session, depending on what I'm seeing happening within your body, what's happening, where the energy is going where I see resistance happening. So you may need more meditation time, or maybe that's just what's being called at that time. So somewhere between 10, 20 minutes, there's meditation. And then from that point, bring you back to, bring you back to the room, allow yourself to just sit in that feeling for a moment, because it is a state of euphoria. It is a state of, wow. What just happened? Where was I? And so I provide that space because I feel like that's part of the process of giving you that five to 10 minutes to sit with that feeling. Because most people, they walk away and they're like, okay, what's next, right? What do I have next? Um, Or they have a child and like, okay, well, they need me. So if I can create that space and That's what a session looks like. Um, It is not something that I encourage someone just to do one off of. It is a deep practice where four sessions is really, really good. Um, Five sessions is, is optimal. And then taking a break, allowing that work to integrate. And that's why in my program, I've designed it that way. Because as I've done my own breath work practices, what I realized is I would have these incredible mystical experiences with my breath during meditation. And then afterwards, I'd be like, I don't know what to do with this information, right? My, my subconscious and my, um, my conscious mind are like, uh, how do we manage going from 5D um, fifth dimension reality, which is beyond, um, this 
the 3D world that we live in and come back to 3D and how do I function? So I'd have these huge swings and emotions and I'd have days where I would just cry and cry and cry. And it, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And, and who do I talk to? Um, so I really, in my program, wanted to create that space for people that, first of all, I understand if you feel like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to talk about this because I can't even internalize what happened, let alone share it with anybody. So I, I've created that space that I'm open. So you have a place to talk to. Um, I can hold that space for your experience. We can work through whatever came up. And then we can move forward, um, whatever that may mean, right? And I never try to push somebody beyond where they're at. It's never the goal. It's about them trying to meet themselves where they are. So that's why my program is five breath sessions along with five integration weeks. So we can breathe. And you can integrate the work and we can be together and you can share and you have that you i'm holding that space specifically for you and then we go back through a breath practice and then an integration week and to me that's what holistic is about all holistic is about finding that your own space your own alignment your own your own healing powers mm -hmm. so yeah. You know, you've answered so many of the questions I had, you know, it, it's perfect. It's perfect because it's so important. That I think the integrating part is what even I skip out of a lot of, you know, practice exercises. You do the work, you know, you can do the yoga for like 20 minutes and then I'm like, oh, off to do work again. And then, and then you don't give yourself the space to digest, to feel it. And I think it's amazing that you're creating that space and you're there to support them. Like, Hey, I'm here if you need me, but I'm also in the background. If you don't need me, it's so necessary to have that safety blanket. It is because it's so, it's a beautiful practice. It's a beautiful thing to experience. But when you start to really dive into these, deeper meditations you have a hard time really processing it because it's not what you're used to right when you've lived your entire life doing 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 pushing 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 gaining information from external um sources it's completely different experience to to be like well there is no one talking but i hear people talking mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I can have that conversation. I love having these conversations because it's crazy when I have these conversations, you're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole point is the, my, my clients struggle with that too, right? They, we don't, it's difficult to go back and forth. So we have to, in the beginning especially, and I think throughout anybody's life, just to have somebody that's like, you know what? I see you. Here's a space just for you, mm -hmm. just for you, whatever you need in this space. And, and that's what I wanted to create. And that, that is, that is my ultimate goal is to lead people in. I love that you called integration digestion because it is, it is your body digesting that information. And we need to give that time and space. Yeah. It's almost like, the cycle or whatever you're learning wouldn't complete itself without that space. Because you really made me think how many times I've had like breakthrough moments. I'm like, Oh, okay. I understand what's holding me back. And then afterwards I find myself falling back to the pattern and it's so easy to get frustrated. It's like, I thought I learned that lesson already. I thought I figured it out. Why is this still a challenge? But like you said, the universe will bring you what you want to grow out of. And it comes through, challenges you even phrase it as do you accept this opportunity <laughs> and a lot of times we see it as like why is this happening to me but no it's you want to grow this is what it takes <laughs> it is what it takes 
And I love, I got this from my mentor. Why is this happening for you? Why do I get to do this work? The more purposeful we are in the words that we use, the more purpose we find in the situations that we are presented with. So why is this happening for me? Is one that I, 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 I think is on replay in my head now. Mm -hmm. And why do I get to do this work? Why do I get to get up in the morning? Why do I get to spend time with my journal? Why do I get to speak to wonderful people like you? Why do I get to clean up pee from my puppies? Because yes, I was going to flip them in somewhere. <laughs> in but, and you could be like, well, that's a stupid thing to be like, why do I get to clean up pee? But it's the truth. I get to clean up pee because I have these two adorable, lovable puppies that I would give anything for right now. And I get to have them in my life. So I also get their pee on the floor. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's balance, right? <laughs> With all the good, it comes, well, sometimes the inconvenience. It wouldn't be bad. It's just natural. <laughs> it's natural. <laughs> and they're, what do they know? They're not like, there's a special place I have to pee. I just have to pee. I'm confused by this. There's, I shouldn't do this right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, who can most benefit from breath work? Well, of course, my answer is everyone. Um, you did mention a little bit sometimes resistance comes out during a session. Do you have an example of how that might present? How what? How the resistance might show itself. Like resistance? Yeah. Um... Resistance is what I can see in the breath is there's, there's a couple of ways. One resistance shows in which I can't see, but when your mind is restless. So if we're breathing in a certain area and you feel uncomfortable mentally, like it's restless, your thoughts start to wander more. That is a resistance. That is your body's innate resist oh wait, wait wait we're not going there right so i'm gonna i'm gonna distract you by going off into someplace else so that's number one of resistance two how i can see it is i can see that there's usually this little point in the breath that as you inhale there's this there's this natural smoothness in the breath but if you're hitting that resistance point it's not smooth anymore right like there's like you're pushing past we never want to push. It's the same thing in yoga, right? We never want to push past that resistance. We want to hit that resistance. Oh, there it is. And we want to lean into it. And that's where resistance comes up in the two places. You can feel it when you're, if I, let's say, for example, I were to say, okay, we're going to breathe through the abdominal region, inhale and, you know, let that abdomen expand up. And you hit that point and then you push past that point. There's that little, it's like a little blip. I don't, it's hard to, you know, necessarily explain it without seeing it, but there's just that little blip where you can see, oh, we went past our resistance. Like tension? I think yeah. I know. Because like sometimes a little I, bit of tension. right. Sometimes I try to take a deep breath, but I know my chest is tight. So it's like, it's like a little, like a hiccup almost. Yeah. It's, oh. it's, because it's so smooth, your breath is, is smooth. Um, it's like that ocean wave, right? When you start to feel that, that right there is, are you pushing past? Are you hitting that resistance? And what is that resistance about? And for you, when you say that, I mean, excuse me, I immediately think when you take that deep breath in through your chest, what is happening in your abdomen? Is it tight? Are you holding it tight? Tight, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So here's my suggestion. Next time you try to do that, soften your hips, soften your abdomen. Now inhale through your chest. Oh, yeah. I've always had trouble. You, 
in all the meditation exercise where they tell you to feel the abdomen expand, I feel like mine rarely does unless I really try to like wiggle my way through. It's always my chest. But when you said soften your hips, soften your belly, I didn't even know I was holding tension there. Yeah. Most people, so especially women, one, we're always trying to suck in, right? We've always trying to hold in. And so we immediately have this tension in our abdomen. That tension also comes up from our psoas muscle, muscle up into our hips and then also up into our diaphragm. Because our psoas and our diaphragm are connected. So relaxing through your hips, softening your abdomen, then taking the inhale and you'll feel more expansive through your chest. Yes, that was like magic, Jen. <laughs> well, at least for me, I, I hope whoever's listening also tries this out. But this was so simple. I didn't even, I think I just tilted my hips a little bit. And then I'm like, whoa, breath can flow through. <laughs> this is magic. <laughs> you are magic, Jen. <laughs> so you author a free prawn approach to coaching, breath, self-care, and neuroscience. Why these three? So we've kind of touched on that a little bit, right? That integration part is where that comes in. So I could breathe with you all day, right? I could give you that exercise. We could do that same exercise for the next 30 minutes, let's say. Mm -hmm. But if I don't help you and guide you and lead you into how to integrate that through self-care and how to shift your thoughts around that, what did you get from it? Quite honestly, what did you get? You just got me 30 minutes of me telling you what to do. Right. Where if I guide you through the breath, give you the tools to shift your perspective around what self-care actually means and what it means to you, and then I give you some opportunities to rewire your thoughts about yourself and your life, then we can, then you're fully integrating that. You're fully integrating everything that happened through your session and you're taking it one step further. And that's why I use the free prong approach. Because when we create as entrepreneurs, we create because whatever was, we didn't have what we're creating. Right? We wish whatever we're creating was existing for us. And so I feel that. I feel that deeply. Like, I wish this existed when I was going through this. Someone to be like, all right, we just worked with the breath. Now, let's take this a next step and let me really guide you into your inner journey. And that's what we need. We just want people to guide us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to guide I you, not force or control to give you the space and I love that you use breath because everybody has it like nobody can say like you know I can't work with you I, I don't my breath is not proper you know it's such a universal thing that we all do but we take for granted and you're just like you know back to basics you know a baby is born with breath this is what's going to sustain you until the very last breath let's work with it in a more sustainable way basically Beautiful, beautiful. I love that you got so much out of that little that little thing. And I will so here um, to take what you had mentioned about your breath just one step further. So you said you find it difficult to breathe in that lower that lower region, right? It feels tight. So anytime someone finds an area difficult to breathe in, whether it's the chest, the head, the abdomen, um, the subabdomen, any of those areas. Each time we breathe in a certain area, there's those energy centers, chakras that are within that, that are housed. So if that is where you're finding difficulty breathing, there is some sort of congestion or depletion that's happening within you that it is time for you to, maybe if you're ready, start looking into. 
So in those lower regions, you're talking about your first chakra and your second chakra. So your root and your um, sacral. Your root is all about feeling safe. So you can ask yourself the simple question, do I, what areas of my life do I not feel safe in? And what areas of my life do I feel safe in? And this is where you have to be honest with yourself of what areas don't you? And that's where you start to be like, okay, well, I don't feel safe in this situation or even past. Mm -hmm. And you can start working through those. And your sacral chakra is all about play and creativity. So have you ever been stifled in your creativity, in your play? Have you ever been told that, you know, you shouldn't play, this is serious, things like that. Where can you bring back those little, those little pieces of childhood back into, you know, your life? Um, so those are the two, besides relaxing, if that area is difficult, that's, those are the two things that I would suggest for you to, you know, spend a little time on. Oh, I felt like, I feel like I just got a mini session with you. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. <laughs> for anyone who's interested in learning more about breathing, Jen is your girl. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> oh, and it was so soft. Your guidance was very subtle. I don't know if that's the word. It was just I was being guided and lifted without even knowing. That's so you and I, I think you and I could totally have a human design eat out session. Yes. <laughs> totally could have that happen. And so ever since I've dived, dived into human design, I have, my mind, my world, my whole world has just been completely transformed in how I see myself and how I present myself. So, and if you don't know human design, for those who are listening, I highly recommend it. You need to go look at it. You need to figure out what you are and, and just spend some time with it. But we're both projectors. Yes. And our big thing is recognition, invitation, right? Invitation. Because I'm totally going to just take this back because I'm like, I see it now. You <laughs> yes. shared with me and I was like, Oh, no, she invited me in to guide you. So I did. And that's why it felt easy. And that's why it feels good to me. It's because you invited me in and I said, okay, here's my wisdom. Here's my knowledge. And it's, I'm telling you. Mind blow. That's how I feel about it because I'm always like, I'm too shy to promote myself. I'm too. And then I realize also human design that the invitation, I just, you know, I just share what I love. And eventually I'm sure a lot of people who've seen your work as well, they're like, what are you doing? What is it about the breath? They're like, what is it about it? yoga? I think when we share what we love, that's our invitation when people respond. Mm -hmm. For me, it was the most mind blowing and it made so much sense. I know. <laughs> we're gonna have part two of this podcast where we I talk know. about human design <laughs> we're just gonna a hundred percent like i i love it i love it i uh, i've had so many breakthroughs since i dived into it i could just you and i could have a whole other conversation about it. yes let's have a projector chat <laughs> about it <laughs> i wanted to wrap this up with some rapid fire questions okay um What's the best compliment you've ever received? My mind just went in a thousand different places. I, I know, because this is <laughs> this is a deep question <laughs> to be a rapid fire. <laughs> so, um, I'll take it on a professional level, and the best compliment I ever received is I actually got a DM in my Instagram the other day, and um, it was a previous client and she said, I was really struggling today and I took seven minutes to breathe with an intention and it completely transformed the rest of my day. And I was like, I just, I just sat in that. I just sat in that as that's, that is a huge compliment. I felt like that was a compliment to me and to her also for taking that 
initiative to give herself that. So to me, again, projector style, completely just that was a huge compliment. Yeah, it's so validating too, you know, like this is what you love to do and knowing that it helps somebody. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm I'm enjoying that energy. I'm taking in that energy. (laughs) Um, A book that's changed your life. Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Ooh, I've got to check that out. That one, and then I will, my second, I'm going to give you two because I can't. Yeah. Uh, Second one is The Book of Joy by the Dalai Lama and Jasmine Tutu. Yes, yes, I love that book. It's one of my favorites too. What does coming home to yourself mean to you? Coming home to myself, just, it's that stillness. That internal stillness where you can hear, see, feel, and even that texture of just you. I'm feeling that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Any advice for your younger self? Oh. These are probably not rapid fire questions. <laughs> That's a deep question, girl. I know. I think I'll change the name for it. <laughs> Deep thoughts. <laughs> um, no matter what, you're going to be okay. And you are always supported and guided. Yes. And finally, where can people find you? Oh, yay. Um, now that's a rapid fire question. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Um, I am Orange Sky Jen on Instagram. My website is Orange Sky Wellness. Um, as you, you know, if you can see the video, my wall actually has an orange sky on it. Um, so anything Orange Sky, you can find me. You can find me there. That's, that's it. You also have a Stress to Serene 10 week program. I do. And um, in honor of the end of the year and the holidays, I'm actually opening two spots. It closed back in October. I'm opening up two spots to help people guide themselves and find their ways back home to themselves through this crazy holiday season that we're heading into that nobody really knows how to celebrate. Um, And just set yourself up for 2021. Crazy to Serene, I kind of talked about it during the podcast. It's 10 weeks. It's five 90-minute breathwork sessions followed by a 30-minute integration period um, or session. And it is. It's alternating, 90 minutes, 30 minutes. It also gives you that time so you're not trying to commit 10 weeks of 90 minutes every week. Mm -hmm. Bringing this to, you know, your everyday person that feels busy, that feels overwhelmed, that feels stressed. And it's like, how do I create more of myself just to do everything? And you don't need to be more, there don't, doesn't need to be more of you. There just needs to be more of you aligned and whole. So that's what the whole 10 weeks is about. Um, guiding you through the breath. We start in the lower regions. We start with that lower breathing realm and then we just slowly work our way up i give you the practices i give you the i send you weekly emails i give you the input i give you opportunities for you to check in with yourself throughout the entire program and connect with your breath so even if you don't have time for a 90 minute session or to sit down and meditate for 10 minutes i can give you a breath practice that you can do while you're standing in the grocery line And no one would know that you're doing it except for you. Oh, yes. Um, are these digital or in person? They're, um, I do Zoom for most of my clients. But if you are local um, and you are actually listening to this, I do have a place now that we can do in-person sessions also. So that is an option if you're local. But if you're not local, I see people um, – I see people all over the the country and we just do it via Zoom. So, yes. 
Awesome. Awesome. If you listen and you try the exercises that Jen was giving us, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to love it. You'll get more of her. <laughs> I've, um, I was so excited to do this. I was so excited to be on your podcast Aww. and support you. It meant so much that you asked. So I'm so, so happy that we got to spend this time together. It means so much to me. <laughs> Jen, you have no idea. I was like so nervous, but I was also super excited because I've witnessed your journey a little bit of how much, you know, you've shared and how much a transformation has been. And I'm just like, I'm rooting for you. You're so amazing. You're so inspirational. So thank you. And I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will get so much value from what you've shared today. So oh, thank yeah. you. I, I can, I hope, um, and reach out to me. I also have, if you're not sure if this is for you and you just want someone to hold some space for you, I've opened up what I call tea and chat. Um, it's on my schedule. You can just sign up for that. And that's an opportunity for you and I to just chat, chat, mostly you share and I listen and you know, no expectations. Just if you need, a, need someone just to hold some space for you. I, I have that ability, so yes. and I want to. I can I can attest to that. When we met in Strala, I think it was we had an exercise together, and afterwards I was like, I love you. <laughs> it was just we had such a good connection. I think it was a shiatsu exercise, and I just felt comfortable because you're able to hold that space and you know just be there. So thank yeah. you, thank you for doing the same today. <laughs> Absolutely, anytime, anytime. And I I'm looking forward to part two. Yes. Design. Yes. I'll look more into it. We'll nerd out. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. All right. Thanks, Jess. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review on iTunes. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.